Well, hello and uh, welcome to a window on wine online wine tasting. Blah, blah, blah. I can't get my teeth in. So welcome to a window on wine online wine tasting with me, Sarah Ball. As it's the Queen's Diamond Jubilee this weekend and it's also English Wine Week. I'm feeling very patriotic, as you can probably see. And um, we're going to taste today Asda's Three Choirs Regalia. 2011. Um, it's available from Asda Supermarkets, priced uh, £6 at the moment to the third, uh, normal price £7.30. I'm delighted to say that I'm joined online by two friends who've agreed to be part of this experimental online wine tasting and uh, they bought the same wine and agreed to hang out uh, online at the same time and taste it with me. Uh, so I'll invite my co-tasters to introduce themselves. Uh, first of all, Michelle. Um, I'm Michelle. I live in Chiswick. Um, I am a big English wine fan and looking forward to trying this very regal looking bottle. And Carl. Well, I'm not Michelle. I'm Carl and I also live in West London as well. I'm a big English wine fan and this is the perfect time to celebrate English wine uh, for all the reasons you said earlier. So, uh, you can see I've picked my uh, co-tasters uh, very sensibly. So, you've got your glasses prepared, I guess, guys? No, yeah. I have I've got pour. <laughs> okay, while Michelle's pouring, I'll just tell you a little bit about uh, Three Choirs Regalia. Um, it's a, uh, well, Three Choirs is a, uh, a Gloucestershire vineyard. Uh, it's about 75 acres. Um, apparently, it's uh, won most awards of any single vineyard uh, in uh, Great Britain. First planted in 1973 and first vintage in 1978. Um, apparently, it has a very unique microclimate. It's protected by both the Malvern Hills and the Brecon Beacons, which makes it a really good place to grow uh, vines. Um, regalia is a result of a close collaboration between the Three Choirs winemaker Martin Folk uh, and also Asda wine selector Katie Thompson. And uh, it's a blend of five grape varietals, Madeleine Angevine, Phoenix, Schonberger, Sigariba and Saville Blanc. And we'll talk more about those in a minute. Um, the grapes were picked from wines, uh, from vines rather, up to 30 years old, uh, fermented in stainless steel, so there's no oak going to be masking those flavours, uh, and uh, blending took place after fermentation, my winemaker's notes tell me. So, uh, guys, let's have a, have a look at the wine first of all. Um, any comments on the colour first of all? Get our white bits of paper. What do you pale. think? It's quite pale. pale, but it's got a bit of kind of yellowness to yeah, it. Yeah, there's a nice tint in it, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, it's not kind of whitish. It's got definitely got a yellowness in my darkened light. So a bit of kind of pale lemon. Yeah. And it's clear, which is always a good sign. Yeah, crystal clear. <laughs> um, if we give it a bit of a swirl, um. Are we getting any legs there on the glass? Those are those drippy, downy things that you get on the glass, sometimes called tears, sometimes called legs. There is, but not a lot. No, quite thin and angly. Yeah, I'd agree. I don't think there's too much. Not very um, pronounced, are they at all? No, not very pronounced. It's like one so, or two. One or two, Carl, you yeah. can see. Yeah. I think that probably means the alcohol's not massively uh, strong and uh, it's probably not a very sweet wine. Uh, legs or tears tend to indicate either sweetness yeah. or um, something that's very alcoholic. Have a, guess at, you have a guess at the alcoholic content? I've not uh, looked at the I'd, I'd be cheating because I've looked at the back of the bottle. I'd say about 11.5%. 11, 11.5%? Good guess. Good guess. Well, well, we can test that again when we... Um, okay. <laughs> when we, we taste it. So um, let's um, let's go to a, a sniff now then. So a bit of a swirl. If we're having problems getting aromas, a good tip is to just give it a swirl with your 
hand on top of the glass. I'm getting lots of aromas. Yes. I think it's quite complex. I think there's a lot going on in there. Mind you, there is five grapes, isn't there? So, Carl, tell me what you, um, oh dear, what this you is think is going on. I, I would have expected a lot of lemony, limey, acidic type smells in there, but I'm getting some sort of sweety apricot honey type things. Mm-hmm. This I'm getting some sort of licorice smell. Licorice? Ooh, wow, Michelle. It's not normally something. It's, it smells delightful. It's an unusual smell. Mmm. Yeah, quite an intense yeah. Yeah. aroma. Honey. What? There's a honey element. Honeyed? Mm-hmm. I oh. think um, I am getting a bit of citrus. I think... Mm, I think lemony, lemony, but there's some blossomy kind of thing. Um, maybe elderflower or something yeah. like that. Yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. traditional Englishy smell, maybe. Not bad, it. But I see what you mean about the um, something a bit honeyed. Maybe that's a blossom kind of. Yeah, what, what's blossom? interesting is the minute you start to smell it, you get a woof on the nose, and as you keep trying to pick up something. It trails off because you obviously your nose is getting used to the smell. So I think it's time to sniff the back of my hand. <laughs> You're resetting your nose. Go for it. Do I do? It? Is it with the palm or the top? It's the back. You can <laughs> sniff. I'm sure you don't sniff the palm. Is that Just called the back. a backhander? <laughs> right. Let's try again. Ooh, I got something a bit more grassy there, like nettles or something. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think it's quite complex when you think about six quid. You did say six pounds, was it five pounds you said? Six pounds at the moment. On six special pounds offer. After. I think there's a lot going on. I'm interested in the taste. Because okay, I think well, just hold your horses on. for the taste, Carl, because I want to tell you a little bit more about the grapes. Um, Can't I just do this quickly? <laughs> it's just under... Um, 50% Madeleine Angevin, uh, which is a uh, late flowering um, but a reliably uh, ripening uh, grape. Useful for blending, ages well, low acidity, um, light and fruity with a muscatty bouquet, which may be where you were getting your honey stuff right. from. Um, Phoenix, apparently. 21% of this blend is Phoenix. It's a recent uh, cross. It's a recent hybrid variety. Uh, quite Bacchus-like, which is another popular um, English uh, grape and growing in, um, in popularity. When I say English grape, I mean grape grown a lot in England. Yeah, okay. um, sea Gariba, 17% uh, of the blend. Intensely aromatic. Um, and one of its parents is Gewurztramina, um, ah, the German grape. So... Right. That's where we'd be getting some of those aromatic bits and bobs for. Apparently, it's really only used in blending because it's a bit uh, overwhelming. Uh, Schoenberger, grape number four, 15%, another German native. Good disease resistant, good in our soggy English climate, I think. Um, produces relatively full-bodied wines and apparently, when fully ripe, has a pink tinge. <coughs> and um, finally, bless you, Michelle, um, the uh, final grape is uh, Sable Blanc. Uh, it's a French variety, developed in the 1920s, suited to cool climates, and uh, about 10 years ago was the most grown grape <coughs> in the UK. Um, really disease resistant. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's very good again for uh, all this rain we've been having. Uh, you can also use it in sparkling wines, and uh, as you know, England's got a brilliant tradition of sparkling wine. And uh, Sable Blanc is uh, one of the varieties we're using with that. Okay, so uh, enough background on to the taste now. I think this is the bit we've been waiting for. So here we go, a little bit of a slurp. Mmm. So... Mmm, 
I think there's also a lot going on there on the palace as well as on the nose. So, um, it's got the sweet elements in the taste, hasn't it? You, it it's mm. instantly there, apricot type, sweety. And you yes. said, but a dry <laughs> wine, I think, possibly, I... possibly just off dry, but dry. We can test, do the do the do the dryness test by just putting the tip of our tongs in the, in the wine. Mm. So, dry, maybe squeaking to off dry, but only just, I think. I agree, off dry. What about acidity? Mouth watering. I expected more acidity. I, I, I think it's, I, I like acidic wines, but this, you could almost drink this with a pudding, in my opinion. I don't think it's that sweet. Well, I'm, I'm getting lots of sweet elements in it. Is it because I'm thirsty? <laughs> I think the length got some bitterness to it. Yeah, I think I'm getting some mouth wateringness. I'm gonna have another little slurp just in, just to check. I think it's got a long length as well. Mm. I think it comes out on the length. It's definitely got some citrus in the taste. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I definitely got lemon. Um and some minerality maybe? There's yeah. there's a kind of yeah. Dry, not chalkiness, but just something there that's kind of a bit mineral. So good acidity. Yeah, good acidity. But not good massive taste. acidity. It's not a scary English kind of paint stripper wine. No. Uh, we don't make those anymore, of course. Um, it's dry, but tastes t touch sweet. I think that might be the fruitiness. Um, yeah. Good minerality. Great length, I think. I'm getting yeah. those... Citrusy yeah. flavours are still still going on and on. Uh, if you yeah. had not said the price, or, I, or we didn't know what the price was of this bottle of wine, I would have said it was more than six pound. I think mm -hmm. it seems to be a good, a very good quality wine for the price. It's excellent value. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and it'd be interesting to to drink this with. I mean, are you are you doing food pairing with this? Are you talking about food pairing, or is that not? Yeah. Obvious? What would you? That's a yeah. What would you? What would you go with? Well, I'd like to try it with first of all the the, the, the lighter, you know, the lighter, the, you know, the, the seafood, etc., um, salads, ghost cheese, that type of thing, and just work through things a little bit stronger to see where the flavours disappear, you know, where the where the length is affected, etc., and and the, and the flavours dissipate when that imbalance comes because I think this is quite a strong a strong flavored wine I think it has I don't think it's like you say it's not one of those insipid or those English wines or wines that you put in the mouth and it's there gone instantly I think this I think it's very very enjoyable it's good I like it Michelle would you try it with your English asparagus maybe because especially if it's in a lemony type yeah. um, sauce or something with it's you um, because I think that would maybe complement it quite well. I think you've got. I think the wine could possibly overpower something that's very mild flavour. So it needs to have a strong taste to complement it. Yeah, yeah. Um, ready to drink now? I think we'd all agree. Yes. Don't yeah. want to keep this for for very no. long. I don't think. So. I think it's ready to drink in the next ten minutes. The whole bottle. <laughs> well, I'm not going to keep you much longer. Oh. I'm just going to explain. Um, the, the, uh, it's called Regalia, and um, the reason it's called Regalia is that um, basically, uh, and it says the story on the back, um, that the king's champion at the coronation um, wears full regalia, and in 1325, um, the local lord from the next door village to this uh, wine was chosen as the champion for the coronation. So... Uh, a royal connection on Jubilee weekend, um, very appropriate. Yeah. Um, I like the um, bottle with the um, crown on it. You like the crown on it? Yeah, it feels very regal, the colours and the, the design. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really quite elegant and classy, and what attracted me to it when I tasted it at, it at the English Wine Producers Tasting was that um, it not only tastes decent, but the yeah. price, yeah. 7.30 full price, pretty affordable. Yeah. 
Yeah. Most English wines, even the still ones, are much, much more than that. So right. I think this is kind of a, a wine for the jubilee that everyone can um, can can share in. Um, so I'm 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 pretty pleased to have found it. And and it's in a green it's green glass as well. It's a green bottle, isn't it? It is. Sometimes you tend to get white wines. In, in clear glass, and it's a screw top, I see as well, which uh, I think it ticks all the boxes for me. I'd, buy, I'd definitely buy that again. You could possibly think it's red, though, a red bottle yeah. wine, because of the red on the outside and the red on the top. Oh, the red closure. Uh, mm. the you would look and think, maybe if it wasn't in the white section, obviously, you could possibly think it was red from some of the designs. It, may, may I mention that it was an ordeal trying to find it in Asda? Because, oh no, really? Yes, uh, am I allowed to say or is that not Yeah, point? go for it. Well, basically we had to ask somebody in the store to find us the, the English wine. And he says, well, he says, I think it was quote something like, uh, well, not all the stores stock English wine, so we probably haven't got it. So we looked around and about and we found a section that seemed to be earmarked for the Blue Nuns and that style of wine from, from Germany. And they're sandwiched between... Um, that type of wine away from, away from where you'd expect it to be, there it was. So that's where we found it, and glad we did. Oh dear! Right. Well, I'm, I'll be really interested um, to uh, hear what the Asda team think of that, and also um, how their sales of Regalia have gone over the weekend. We were supposed to have a couple of other um, friends joining us this evening, um, one of whom couldn't get hold of any wine at his Asda because it hadn't been delivered and another one who couldn't find it and I don't know the reason what, whether that it, it had flown off the shelves or whether maybe uh, it had not been delivered but um, if you are looking out for it um, you can find it in Asda as we keep saying six pounds at the moment uh, goes up to seven pounds thirty um, from the 23rd of June. Um, as does Master of Wine, Philippa Carr has written that um, although they haven't had any English wine on the shelves in Asda for a long time, uh, she wants uh, us to remind people that uh, Asda was the first supermarket to have uh, English wine on the shelves in the, uh, in the 1990s. So I wonder whether if it's been successful this weekend there'll be a uh, rosé and a red following. Who knows? Knows. So, um, any final thoughts from you, Michelle? Um, I noticed that there was um, a QR code on the back, which I thought was very interesting. I'll have a play of that later. See what information that gives me that's different thoughts on the back, hopefully. Uh, and Carl, your final thoughts? Final thoughts? Um, good value for money. I, it's a lovely wine. It ticks all the boxes for me for a general quaff. On a, on, a, on, a, on any afternoon, cold, raining, or sunny. Afternoon. Yeah, and and it, I, I think it will go well with certain foods. I'd like to try it with some food. I think well done as the for um, putting it on a special offer. I guess of six quid. I think it's excellent value. I think you can't go wrong with it. Good. Well, um, thank you very much to uh, Carl and Michelle um, for joining us or joining me. I'm uh, getting a little bit ahead of myself there. Um, what I was going to do is um, we've got a couple of um, websites um, just to show you uh, before we go. Um, you can uh, regularly see uh, Window on Wines reviews uh, here on uh, the Window on Wine website, www.windowonwine.co.uk. And if you want to uh, hear more uh, or see more about Three Choirs, then uh, you can find out about their other wines other than their regalia blend at www.3-vineyards.co.uk. Uh, so, yeah, a couple of websites uh, to leave you with there. Um, thank you very much. I, I hope you've enjoyed this um, experimental uh, wine tasting online. Thanks again to Carl and Michelle. And, um, yeah, oh, here's the next time. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. See you have. Bye. Bye. Bye.